Hey guys, so if you're watching this video, you probably were just like me three years ago. Three years ago, I did nothing about film photography, but I was very interested in that topic. And I just want to tell you a little story so you can get a little bit better connected to me of how I got into film photography. So I was just browsing YouTube, just like you guys right now. And I was looking at different videos and I was looking at a video called What is inside my camera bag? I watched the video and the guy was pulling out a Leica M2. Back then I did, as I said, know nothing about film photography and even less about Leica. I just knew that they looked very great. So the next video I watched was a, about a Leica M3 and I found out that this camera is actually now 60 years old or around 60 years, I think it came out in 54 and that this design still held up until now. And he was taking pictures on, on the Leica M3, walking around the city, I was walking around Hong Kong and the pictures he took looked great. So for someone like me who was growing up in the 2000s, I was born 1997, that was crazy because I thought the older the camera, the less quality of a picture it is, right? Because if you look at the digital sensors back in 2000, in the early 2000s, they all took crappy pictures, honestly. And I thought that was the same with even all the cameras, but I was completely mistaken. So I want to take you kind of on a journey about how um, I found all these different things out. And I want to explain these things to you. And this is for guys who are like very at the beginning of any uh, film photography or photography in general. And I think of myself as still as a noob. But um, I really love, this is like my hobby, so I really love this hobby, so um, I hope I can share some of the passion with you guys and hope you enjoy and watch the rest of the video. I will repeat myself what I just said there, but um, I think it's a, still a better introduction. Hey guys and welcome to my new video. Today I want to talk about film cameras. Me, I'm an amateur film photographer who basically doesn't know that much, but I think this is very good because I grab some of the basics of film photography or photography itself and that way I can easily explain it to you rather than a pro who has so much knowledge about this whole topic who sometimes misses the point to explain certain things to you and I want to do that by actually introducing you to my Leica M3 so this is kind of a review of the camera itself and a general talk about film photography itself. I talk about the Leica, you can also talk about different cameras. I split this video into different parts so you can just click on the timestamps where you want to go and if you don't like a specific part I speak about then you can just go quickly to the next part. So the first part is obviously about my first film camera and why I got a Leica. One of the deciding factors why I got a film camera in the first place was because that smartphone cameras became so so good and they're getting updated every year same with digital DSLRs or any digital ca digital cameras, right? They're also getting updated every year. So if you want to invest into one, you actually have to stay up to date and it is very costly and it is also very time consuming to, you know, get all the updates and all that. I don't like that. And I was thinking that my phone camera was getting so good that you can easily compare it with the lower priced DSLRs back in the day in like 2016. Back then I had a Canon 100D and I love taking pictures from that but at the same time my phone camera could take the same mostly the same quality pictures so I didn't really feel the need to carry it around anymore if I just have my iPhone with me. So the point of shooting on a digital camera and the one I can only afford it would be a low-cost digital camera uh, it's not really worth it to me anymore because I'm updating my phone every two years. It has a great camera So if I want to shoot digitally, I just take my phone, but this is very different with film See film is already basically out of the age. It's retro, right? So there are no really updates anymore And once you get a film camera, you basically set There's nothing you have to worry about that next year There will be a new film camera coming out with better megapixels Ah, because there are no megapixels on a film camera because your sensor on a film camera is the film you actually put in and not any sensors, right? That's great. So you don't have to worry about updates anymore. That was very, very nice because I hate thinking about updates. So why did I get a Leica though? So for years I literally knew nothing about film photography, but I knew about Leica and I thought their cameras look so, so beautiful. So I decided one day I would like to get a Leica M3 because it's, you know, the, the grandfather of all the Leica M's. And I love the design 
and I love the build quality and I always looked into the camera shops and saw those Leica M's I thought like man they're so nice so two, year, two years ago two you know like two and two and a half years ago I got my first job and then when I made some money I actually spurred out the cash for a Leica M3 back then I literally knew nothing about film photography I did not even know if my Leica which I just bought would take better pictures than any other film camera or anything like that so it was very just like a grab into the dark but I think it worked out in the end because I'm very happy with the system I have now. As I said I did not know that the Leica would take better pictures which brings me to my next point. Does the Leica M3 take better pictures than for example any other camera, any other film camera? I know for some people this might be an obvious answer because they know something about film photography but that, back then I was really a noob. I could not have given you an answer if the Leica would take better pictures or not. Truth to this answer is simply no. A Leica M3 does not take better pictures than any other film camera. There's just three things why you would get a Leica film camera in the first place. First thing is obvious, it's a Leica, it looks nice. The second thing is you pay for the build quality. You see, this is a block of brass. Nothing wobbles around, only the chain on the on my leather strap but the whole thing is built super well so you pay for build quality and back then nothing was built as well i think as the leica so this is one thing you pay for the third thing you pay for is actually this the lens mount so that means you can actually put leica lenses on it why is that such a great thing you might ask well well the leica lenses it's themselves they are very very sharp and in order to put a Leica lens on a camera, you need a Leica mount. So basically Leica is the only system which can really put the Leica lenses on by itself without a extra mount you have to put on, which would also sometimes affect the image quality. So the one of the big things is basically that you can put every Leica lens, even the new ones, on these still vintage and old cameras, which is very, very great. Since they're extremely sharp, and for the sharpness they give you, they're extremely small as well. So they're just great lenses in general. This is actually also the only thing which really affects your image quality compared to any other cameras. But that's the only thing, just the lens you put on it, not the body itself. And back then, I actually thought the body would do something, but it doesn't. So then I want to answer the question, what is actually affecting your image quality when it comes to film photography? That's actually just two things obviously your camera has to work well like it has to get sharp like you have to focus properly and you your timers have to be right so your shutter speed timers and stuff like that i will explain that in a second but um, if your camera is working fine then the only thing which is affecting your image quality is the lens and the film you put in actually let me get a film real quick six and a half hours later This is a film, okay? And this is the only thing which is really affecting your image quality because it's basically the sensor. What is also affecting your image quality is obviously how sharp your lens is, but there's also other options besides Leica which have very, very sharp lenses. So you don't have to be really focused on the lens, just Leica lenses, right? So the reason you have good pictures in digital cameras is on one side also the lens, but on the other side, it is the sensor, okay? <laughs> If you have a very good sensor, then you might have high megapixels, you have good color accuracy, stuff like this. And on a film camera, you don't have any of that. You only have the film. The film is basically your sensor. So depending on which film you put in, you have different sensors, you have different colors, etc. The only thing which is really affecting them, the image quality itself as well, is actually the sharpness of your lens. And this is, as I said, Good with Leica because the Leica lenses are very good. So what really is a Leica body or like any body camera body? It is basically just a box where you put your film, your sensor in, and then you have a lens which actually projects light onto the sensor. So the better your lens and the better your film is, the better your image will be. But basically the box you put in your sensor doesn't really matter. But um, it does matter for some people, this is why the Leica's are so expensive, right? So now I want to talk about the new topic, which is why are people still shooting film? Because it is so old, it doesn't really make sense, right? I mean, you have digital cameras which are amazing, your iPhone takes amazing pictures, right? 
So why would people still bother and shoot film? Basically what a digital photo is, it is photons which actually hit the sensor and then can get transmitted into a digital signal which will make up your picture. On a film camera this is very different. You will also have photons which hit the film but this, those um, photons will actually make a chemical reaction happen and this chemical reaction will actually give you the film. <laughs> it will give you the picture, not the film. But it will give you the photo in the end, right? So basically, you have a chemical signal compared to a digital signal, which is very different. So you can't really fake what a chemical process does compared to a digital process, right? Some people try that with filters and masks and after editing, but um, for many people, it is just looking different and it's not the same for them. So this is why so many people love, love, love film photography. Hey, sorry, I switched that outfit because this video was getting longer and it was Christmas the other day, so I didn't have time to finish the video. So I'll keep going with this outfit now. <laughs> the next question I asked myself, is it difficult to take pictures on a Leica M3? And let me tell you guys, yes, it is difficult. Every shot which you take and which comes out nicely is really a reward for yourself. I'm really so happy about every shot I take. And when it looks great, just, you know, not only just the motive, but also the adjustments, like the settings you do yourself. If it turns out good, I'm already thinking, hey, my photography is improving. So it is very, very rewarding getting a nice picture with a Leica M3. One second, I just thought I want to get the camera so you can understand it better. Two hours later. So the Leica M3 does not come with a light meter. The counterpart, the biggest competitor of the Leica M3, the Leica M6 does come with a light meter. But what exactly does a light meter do? So a light meter comes in many different forms and sizes. This is one on the Leica M3 and this is a one which you can carry around. They are both uh, not electronic, they are manual, but um, they work both fine. So what does a light meter really do? It basically controls your shutter speed. What is your shutter speed? Um, a shutter speed controls how um, long the lens is actually open to get all the light in, right? So basically, if I have a high shutter speed, a lot of light can get into the camera. So when it's darker, you might want to have a longer shutter speed. So basically, this light meter controls the shutter speed because it is seeing how much light is around you and then it adjusts the, the shutter speed. Um, if you don't have a light meter, what's happening then? Well, then you have to control the shutter speed yourself. and you get a feel for it. So this is one extra thing which you have to control with the Leica M3. So usually uh, when you buy a film, you know the ISO. Usually it's 100 or 400, but there's also some cases where it's 800, okay? When you know your ISO, you usually take that value and divide it by one. So if you have an ISO of 400, you're going to take a shutter speed of one over 400. Um, in many cases, this is not really possible because the Leica M3, for example, only has uh, 250 and 500, you just go to the value closest to it, which is in this case 500. So if you have this value, you can basically start shooting at this shutter speed. Uh, what you do then next is you have to adjust, obviously, the aperture. So what is the aperture? The aperture of a lens is how wide it is open. And let me show you. I hope that you can see it. So basically, this is maximal aperture right now. It is open, the maximum it can be open. If I twist it, you see the blades going closer together and the whole system closes down, so less light can actually go in. So the aperture is also connected to light. And there's actually a rule which you can use. Uh, if you set your shutter speed with your ISO together, so let's say I have an ISO 400 film inside, I set my shutter speed at 500, I can start using the Sony 16 rule. And it basically describes how wide open I'm going to have my aperture when I take a picture, depending on the weather outside or when I'm inside. Let's say it is very bright and sunny outside, no clouds, then I'm going to use the Sony 16 rule at 16, meaning uh, my lens is open the least amount possible and so the least amount of light can actually pass through the lens and it won't be overexposed. And you can do that with all kinds of different weathers. There is a, as I said, it's a rule. And basically it says when it's cloudy, you go to this um, aperture and so on. 
So <clears throat> you can use this rule. You don't really have to learn it by heart. I don't know it by heart, but um, I have <clears throat> I've gotten a feeling over the time I've been shooting with this camera how um, high I need my aperture. And sometimes I will also fiddle around with the shutter speed, obviously, to get uh, more light into the camera. Because usually when you shoot inside, I have my aperture usually full open. Maybe this is totally wrong, but it doesn't matter because the pictures I get, they're okay. Um, I have it fully, fully open and I'm going to make the shutter speed a little bit longer as well. Now you think these are two things which you have to control, obviously. Uh, the shutter speed and the aperture. But there's a third thing which you have to do when you want to take a picture. And this is also changing with every picture you take because sometimes there are persons in the shadow, you obviously need more light to get a nice picture of that person. So you basically have to adjust the aperture with every picture you take. In addition to this, um, you also have to focus. The Leica M3 is manual focusing only and it is a range finder. So the system of how to get a nice picture is you actually have to twist the lens on the inner ring to focus on the subject. But this is actually a very fun part and it's not difficult to learn. It is just something you have to get used to and then you will learn how to do it better and quicker. So um, don't be really don't be disencouraged by all the things you have to set. Uh, usually it will take a couple of like maybe a minute to you know get all the settings right and if you take a portrait or something of someone that person just has to wait a minute and but once you have set the, the aperture for the, the right weather, con weather condition and you focus on that person's eyes usually you should focus on the eyes when you want to take a portrait and then you're basically good to go but obviously, if you walk around, you have to start focusing again because the range is going to decrease or increase whether you're stepping forward or backwards. So now I quickly want to compare the Leica M3 to other cameras. The biggest competitor of this camera is actually from the house itself, the Leica M6. The Leica M M6, as I said, is also a very nice. nice camera, very nicely built. But the difference is that it has an integrated light meter. And also, if you want to rewind the film, if you don't know what it is, once the film is shot, you basically have to rewind it. You have to get it back into this plastic cup. So basically you have to rewind your film with the Leica manually, while it is a little bit easier on the Leica M6. On here, you basically have to pull something out and you have to start twisting it. On the Leica M3, you have basically, uh, Leica M6, you basically have like a metal hinge, something similar to this, and you can just start twisting it. It's a little bit easier. But honestly, if you want to shoot anyways, um, it is not a very, a very big concern, okay? Um, this is actually the biggest difference and that the Leica M6 can easier put on like a 35 millimeter lens, it's like different lens systems. Because I'm going to talk about the lens in the very last part of which lens you have to take. Because um, it is not that easy either. <laughs> Uh, for myself, why I decided to get the Leica M3 is because it is fully mechanical. There is no electricity involved in any way, shape or form. So you basically can't even put a battery inside of here. And I just love that everything is mechanical. And in the Leica M6, there is a battery for the light meter. You can use it without the battery and then without the light meter. But um, I just didn't like the idea of putting a battery into your Leica. So um, this is why I stick to the Leica M3. I think another camera which looks very nicely and kind of similar to the Leica M3 is the Canon AE-1. But this one is not a rangefinder and it also has a different lens system. And this is very different, but um, I think it also gives you this nostalgic look, right? So um, if you're going, just going for that, I think this is probably a very good pickup as well. I never shot with it, but um, from what I've heard online, it is a very good camera. In addition to that, it's just, I think, the whole system with a lens is just 200 euros, so it's much cheaper than the Leica. Last but not least is the Voigtlander Besser R. I've never shot with them as well, but apparently they have great build quality as well. They're also a rangefinder and they kind of look similar to the Leica, but I'm not exactly the same, obviously. Which I should mention as well, um, I started, I, I bought myself a Contax C2. Because um, it is also a film camera and it has an amazing build quality as well, but it is a um, point and shoot. So basically it is for a quick picture when you just want to like take out your camera and take a quick picture of something. And with the Leica, you kind of need longer. This is why I wanted to get a point and shoot camera. And it is also very hyped and expensive. So um, I'll make a review about that one later. It is also much easier to use. So if you just want to get something easy and quick to get started with, maybe you should go for that. Oh, 
The reason why I got the Context C2 is because my favorite YouTuber on YouTube ever made a video about it and he kind of hyped it. And he has such a good, good style of making YouTube videos. I'll link him in the description below. Please watch his video as well. Last but not least, I want to talk about the lenses which you can get for the Leica M3. So basically, you can get every lens which has an M mount, okay? And it doesn't matter which brand, it doesn't have to be Leica. And I didn't know that when I got the first the camera, obviously. Back when I got the camera, I bought it off a guy off of Craigslist, like a German type of Craigslist. And he, I, I didn't know which lens I should get, so... After I bought it from him, I, I came back to him and was like, which which lens is good for this camera? Because I really didn't know anything about it. And he gave me some suggestions. Obviously, he knew that um I was not very rich because I was trying, you know, to kind of lowball him. Not extremely lowball. I mean, but just, you know, negotiate the price, I guess. And he recommended to me um, a Voigtlander lens. Um, it is this. Voigtlander lens, Nocturne 50mm. The Voigtlander has very good low light performance. It has an f1.5. That means the lens is opening up to 1.5 of the um, actual lens. So if it would be one, it would be completely open. Like you would just have a glass. And this is very good. A lot of camera um, lenses only go up to two. So for example, the Sumicron, which is the most popular Leica lens, I would say, I would think, um, only opens up to f2. So this one is in that regard a little better. Also, it is very sharp and has an amazing build quality. It's also all metal. It is a little bit cheaper as well as the Sumicron 50mm. And in my mind, I think one day I'm going to get a Sumicron 50mm just to see, how, just how, just to compare it to this lens. And to see if it's really worth it, because I've heard so many good things about the uh, Sumicron 50 millimeters. But this is obviously also a 50 millimeter lens, and I think the reason why I suggest you to go with a 50 millimeter lens is that you don't need any goggles for this camera if you shoot with 50 millimeters. You see, you have a viewfinder, okay? And if you look through this viewfinder, it is meant for 50 millimeter photos, okay? If you do not have a 50 millimeter lens on it, the picture you will get will actually differ from your viewfinder. So if you want to get exactly what is in your viewfinder, I would suggest you going with the 50 millimeter lens. And I think it's also good for starters. There's many good lenses out there, also from size and etc. But I think if you want to go the best bang for your buck, you might should consider um, the Voigtlander 50 Nocturne 50 millimeter f1.5. It doesn't do anything bad, right? So, you know, some lenses which are cheaper and have, for example, like a fish eye of, for example, I think there's some Chinese brands right now making um, very good lenses as well, but um, they're not very classic, okay? And I think if you want to get started with such a camera, you should um, consider being very classic and understanding the system before you go into anything specific or crazy. All I can suggest you is get a 50 millimeter if you don't want any goggles. If you want to go 35 millimeter or let's say 80 millimeter, you would have to put on goggles on the camera, which makes the whole aesthetic kind of like less pleasing. But I would understand if you would like to uh, have not 50 millimeter because for some people it might be a little bit too boring, but I personally really like it. So at the end, I just want to say um, all the pictures I took and I showed you in this video, they were all taken by this Leica M3 and with this um, Nocturne 50mm by Voigtlander. I personally love the combination and I can just recommend it to you guys. I hope a lot of noobs also watch this video and if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to ask me. Um, I'm also still looking, you know, always like at some Leica M6s or Leica M3s uh, to see how the prices are adjusting. Um, I just like that I bought something which is raising, like raising in price. Uh, but I would never consider actually selling it, so it doesn't really matter to me if the camera is raising in price or not, because I just fell in love with it so much. So this was my review of the Leica M3, and I hope you liked it. If you liked it, smash the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and in this YouTube channel, I want to talk about my hobbies, and one of my hobbies is actually film photography. And if you share similar passions with me, why don't you just stick around? Peace.